Hello, everyone. Good morning. We are team number 22 for the inflation of a membrane system, and we will be presenting our senior design expo presentation. The client and advisor of this project is Dr. Matthias Bru as a part of the BioTeam US lab, which is the biomedical soft tissue and implants modeling upscale lab. The members taking responsibility of this process are Justin Tide with strain measurement, Nani Sanchez with sealing, Colvier Vinic with gripping, and Cesar Cerda with pressure application. For the agenda of this presentation, we will discuss the objective of this project as well as its significance, followed by the experimental setup, constraints, requirements, and the project, project's approach divided into the subtopics of gripping of the membrane, sealing of the chamber, pressure application, and strain evaluation system. The objective of this project is to design and manufacture a bubble inflation test device to evaluate the mechanical properties of different synthetic materials under biaxial loading. The client's needs and expectations in this and the healthcare sector are to develop a new generation of implants that can foster the tissue regeneration rather than replacing it and then disappear while the tissue regenerates naturally. The goal for this new implant is to reduce the failure rate of current surgical treatments. A good example of this would be the female genital prolapse, which is an outstanding and increasing problem that affects an estimated of 30% of the female population and 60% of women over 60 years old. Also, out of the 225,000 to 280,000 of treatments in the US, the failure rates go up to 40%. The client's method to create this implant is to oversee the evolution of the mechanical properties during the degradation process, where the mechanical characterization will be done by biaxial mechanical testing, since the tissue in the human body does not behave in only one direction. Uh, by actual testing is necessary to simulate a more accurate behavior of the tissue under specific loads in the human body. Among the different mechanical testing devices that can be developed, the client, the client is asking us to work on a bubble inflation device to test by axial loading. In order to create bubble inflation device, it was necessary to identify the best fluid to be used in the system as well as choosing a method to calculate the pressure requirement. The use of air as the fluid to be pressured was projected mainly due to its high compressibility and its variation with temperature. So a fluid such as water was then selected for, for the system due to its incompressibility, low cost, low viscosity, among other properties. In addition, for the pressure requirements, we considered the concept of spherical shaped vessels, specifically a thin walled vessel where the ratio of radius over the thickness is greater than 10, it been the case for our samples. It is important to know that the maximum inflation height that will be performed will not exceed the radius of the inflation orifice, since when the bubble height exceeds, exceeds this radius, the bubble profile changes from spherical to elliptical, requiring different calculations to be considered. Using ranges of thicknesses and diameters obtained from several research articles, along with stress values of human tissue of the areas of interest, such as the bladder, and using the equations for thin wall spherical vessels, we obtain a range of pressures that will be needed to be applied by the control pressure system to range from zero to 270 kilopascals. Here we have a render of the experimental setup. You can see a syringe-based pressure application system on the right, a sealed pressure chamber in the middle, and a camera to image the sample. This is a visual representation just to show the components of the setup and not exactly representative of the final results. The pressure transducer that will be used to measure the pressure and the camera will be connected to a computer for data logging. For the experiment, we designed three deliverables. Number one, a hermetically sealed pressure chamber with adjustable gripping for the membrane inflation testing. Number two, the hardware and software solution for performing and evaluating the optical strain measurement. And number three, the software controlled fluid pressure application system capable of applying cyclic loads and measuring the pressure. The requirements are divided into the sub-teams for the experiment. <clears throat> we have for sealing 
uh, a hermetic chamber, which is also low cost for gripping. The requirement is that it has to properly grip the tissue. For pressure, we have the derived range of pressures, 0 to 40 PSI. And to describe the cyclic loading capability, it has to be able to cycle each sample uh, less than or about 100 times. And the loading speed has to be variable and capable of being adjusted. For the strain measurement, it has to be optical. It has to have an imaging resolution of 1080p. The lens focal distance must be fixed at 16 millimeters. And the sensor triggering must be remote and have about or less than 100 milliseconds of latency. For the hermetic chamber, uh, we were tasked to create a chamber that both gripped and sealed and also um, was able to apply pressure externally. For the gripping, our task was to able to grip the membrane and the testing sample. The membrane had to be interchangeable whenever the person conducting the experiment felt it needed to be changed. This could be after every test was performed or whenever the membrane failed. As seen on the bottom left figure, we used a lid with about 100 thousandths of material sticking out from the bottom. This will slip fit into the chamber and create compression on the membrane. Now for securing the testing sample, the, tens the testing sample had to be uniformly compressed. And as seen on the bottom right figure, there is a radius cut out of about a quarter of an inch. This will allow the silicone grip to be installed and grip the testing sample when it is clamped down for the, from the top. This will secure the testing sample without compromising its physical integrity. For sealing, we had to create an airtight seal for the fluid that was to be applied so that there wouldn't be any leaks. We, we decided to apply the fluid through the side using MP, MPT barb tubing. As for gripping purposes, as seen in the right picture, we created a quarter of an inch radius in order to fit the missing in order to fit the mason jar clamping system. We also created a slot so that the top part that will be secured to the membrane could fit nicely. In order to secure the membrane, we added four 1024 threaded holes about half inch deep, each at 90 degrees apart that will secure the membrane without piercing it. In this slide, we see the machining processes for both the chamber and the top. In order to machine this, we decided to drill the hole first and then part the material to eliminate multiple steps of drilling. And in this slide, we can see how the chamber and the top part will come together all in unison to secure the membrane and the testing sample. This figure represents our CAD design for the pressure system, uh, which was derived from a syringe pump device and consists of a separate motor that is the main driving unit using a ball screw to apply pressure on the syringe. The hardware control of the chamber is done by controlling the pressure applied to the syringe, therefore controlling the stepped motor by measuring the pressure being applied using a pressure transducer. All of this is controlled by an Arduino microcontroller. After some consideration of various devices that could control the pressure in the system, we identified that building our own syringe system would be the ideal choice instead of buying a new one, since it would be better and cheaper to build our own. Also, uh, since existing syringe systems that are around a reasonable price can only infuse and not withdraw. 
Another advantage is that we can modify it up to present and future needs, such as cyclic loading and an initial design of the system can already be obtained from open sources. The two main modifications of the original design include replacing the original screw that was used as a driving shaft for a ball screw in order to reduce the friction and making the system work smoother. The ball screw system we chose is a 12 millimeter diameter screw with a four millimeter lead. Also, based on this information and the pressure needed to inflate the membrane, we calculated the required torque that will be needed by the main driving unit, for which we chose a stepper motor that could provide a torque of 89 newtons per centimeter and has a capability of 200 steps per revolution which would allow us to not have to use a gearbox. Also, by using an Arduino Uno microcontroller, we can tweak or modify the system's speed or, or flow rate by changing the steps per minute or the syringe itself. Lastly, since being able to measure and control the pressure applied in the system is fundamental, we are here for using a pressure transducer or transmitter which converts pressure into an analog electrical signal. Although there are various types of pressure transducers, one of the most common is the strain gauge based transducer, which is in which con conversion of pressure into an electrical signal was achieved by the physical deformation of strain gauges. This kind of transducer, such as the one shown below, is regularly used for automotive purposes. Uh, it would be an accurate way to measure the fluid pressure in the system. And as mentioned before, the the main driving unit using the split. Uh, I think we gotta click this part too. As mentioned before, the main driving unit use is a stepper motor. Both the stepper motor and the pressure sensor sensor will be managed by the Arduino Uno microcontroller, for which we created the code whose main functions include telling the stepper motor to move a certain amount of steps as a function of the pressure. Uh, to infuse or withdraw as pressure as a certain pressure is reached, and to apply a cyclic loading. For the strain measurement and evaluation part of the experiment, we will be covering the principles of the strain measurements, the image acquisition method, and some preliminary results. The two derived constraints we have for this part of the project are that the method of strain measurement must not involve physically contacting the membrane as to accidentally deform it. The method of strain measurement also, like the other components of the membrane inflation testing device, must take data over time. The technology used for the actual measurement and evaluation of the strain is called digital image correlation. And how that works is using a stochastic or random pattern applied to the sample. It, an imaging software can divide each image into subsets and these subsets can be tracked and the deformation and thus the strain can be determined by tracking these subsets. We are using two softwares for the strain evaluation. We're using DICE, the Digital Image Correlation Engine, an open source DIC tool, and Paraview, the open source visualization software to generate strain animations. Initial testing of the strain evaluation component of the project, we have a 3D printed pressure chamber with a groove for attaching the membrane and a hole for a tank valve to apply the pressure. The tank valve is attached to a bike pump, which will inflate the chamber and deform the membrane. A camera is mounted adjacent to image the sample as it's being deformed. A couple of issues that came up with this are that the 3D printed chambers are not completely sealed and they have leaks and the valve being used has very restrictive flow. So it's, it's uh, a little difficult to apply pressure via the bike pump. So here we have some initial results. The image set being analyzed is animated and can be shown on the top left. And the normal strains and shear strain can be seen on the right side animated. The animation for the shear strain can be seen in a zoomed in view on the bottom left. Looking at these results, a minimal shear strain can be seen in the center, indicating a consistency with expectation. This implies a somewhat uniformity between the axial strains. 
an issue that came up was that since the deformation in the center of the membrane is occurring in the direction of the lens, and at such a small initial focal length, uh, the focusing changes the focal length enough to cause a general relative translation that can be seen in the raw image data and the pair view animations. For the conclusion, we divided the items into work completed and work to be completed. The items that were completed were the design of the system and its subsystems. We completed the hardware and software incorporation of the pressure system. And we also successfully conducted initial strain measurements and evaluation using DICE and also using provided sample image sets that were not covered in this presentation. The items that remain to be completed are the manufacturing of the pressure chamber, the final assembly of the inflation system. We also need to validate the mechanical characterization of a membrane and strain evaluation methods can be further tested. We also need to find a way to fashion the mason jar clamping mechanism on the chamber. And these items will be completed. The conclusion we divided into items that were completed and items that remain to be completed. We finished the design of the system and its subsystems. We completed the hardware and software incorporation of the pressure application system. And we completely, we completed some initial strain measurements using DICE and also using provided sample image sets that were not covered in the presentation. The items that need to be completed are the manufacturing of the pressure chamber, the final assembly of the inflation system, the validation of the mechanical characterization of a membrane, the strain evaluation methods that can still be further tested, and a way to fashion the, the mason jar clamping mechanism onto the chamber. These topics are currently in progress and an update on the state of completion of the project will be given at the ECST Expo. Thank you. Applause. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, stop recording right there, right?